Good day all. My name is Fadis West and I'm a grade 11 pupil from Musenberg High School in Cape Town. The topic I chose is the history of sport with a focus on soccer and particularly the oldest club who played in the Cape District Football Association, Spenston AFC. The reason why I chose this topic is because I too am a soccer player and a soccer fan. I am passionate about soccer and in gathering historical information about soccer I would be expanding my knowledge and understanding on how the game developed in the Western Cape where I reside. My key question is, how did Spenston AFC develop in the past 105 years? Soccer was introduced to South Africans by the English in the 19th century. The first game was played in 1860 between the locals and the British. By 1892, the first white football association of South Africa, or FASA, was established, and later the Indian, Khalids and Bantus, as it was referred to at the time, formed their football association. The roots of soccer were firmly entrenched in South African soil, while non-white players were left to play among themselves. White South African soccer got all the funding for their facilities and were advancing to the national South African squad. FIFA, a non-racial body, recognised FASA, the all-white association, as South Africa's governing soccer body. But in 1964, FIFA banned the white South African team from playing international soccer. Spenson AFC was established in 1903 under a tree in Weinberg, Cape Town. It is one of the oldest existing clubs in the Western Cape. My interviewees, Mr. Cleofas and Mr. Van Diemen, confirmed that the club was named after the house Spenston, in which the Navy captain Spencer lived. At the time Spenson was established, the day-to-day -day running of the club was conducted very informally by enthusiastic individuals. However, today we see soccer clubs run much in the same way as one would run a uh, business. Spenson wore the halves jersey, with one half sky blue and the other half navy. The design of the jersey has changed over time, but they've reverted back to the original design. The hoop socks is also sky blue and navy. The club emblem design includes that of a tree under which early meetings took place, and a ship, symbolic of the club's naval history. In 1929, the Committee of Six drafted a manifesto with a view of forming a union. They distributed it to the six existing clubs, and this culminated into the birth of the Cape District Football Association to which Spenston is affiliated. Cape District Football Association, or CDFA, decided to honour its oldest clubs. The association colours are Sky Blue of Spenston and Maroon of Yorkshire. No two clubs could share so unique an honour to have part of the respective colours blended into that of a parent body jersey. Spenston's earlier matches were played against the British troops at Youngsfield Military Camp. Thereafter, they played at Rosmead Avenue Sports Ground until the Cape District Football Association leased a field from the City Council and named it Princeton Sports Ground. In 1963, the Princeton Sports Ground was renamed William Herbert Sports Ground after Mr. William Herbert for his contribution and commitment to the sport. Against the odds, soccer continued to thrive at William Herbert Sports Ground, which was the pride of the coloured football community. Vast crowds would pack the field to watch their local heroes play. Mr. Cleofas explained that spectators would stream down Park Road to William Herbert on a Saturday to watch soccer. The Cape District Football Association was conservative in its early policy. During the 1950s and 60s, Muslim and African players and clubs were not allowed membership. Sports reflects many of the divisions and conflicts in society. To understand it, one needs to understand the community in which the sport was played and administered. Mr. Cleofas explained that the community of Weinberg at the time was generally a class-conscious community. But by 1977, the CDFA, or the Cape District Football Association, scrapped its racism policy. Spence and AFC remains loyally affiliated to the Cape District Football Association. Shamu Adams, the current chairperson of Spenston, recalled going to the soccer field to play soccer as his fondest childhood memory. 1950 to 1960 was Spenson's best soccer years, winning the MAGA trophy more than once during this period. Mr. Cleofas, who played in the team, remembered the win was a memorable experience. Shamil Adams confirmed in the interview that the team of 1958 who won the MAGA trophy was the best team Spenson had in his 105 years history. In South Africa, sport boycotts made a great contribution to the liberation struggle. The aim of the South African Council on Sport, or SACOS, was to make the South African sporting stakeholders aware of the adverse effects the apartheid laws had on sport. Trevor Manuel explained in the interview that the slogan, No Normal Sport in an Abnormal Society, became a household saying. It revolved around the belief that while 
Apartheid is in practice. Sports will continue to be affected. In the 1970s, Spenson started to take a steady decline in performance. And the reasons were firstly, as Mr. Cleofas explained, when the Group Areas Act was implemented, this gradually shook the stability of Spenston. As a result, the club was unable to filter into other areas, but players who left the club established soccer in the areas when they then resided, like Michel's Plain. And secondly, despite the fact that soccer continued to flow into separate streams, there were still players who rose to the top and inspired thousands. Leslie Whitey van Diemen, Spenston Player of the Century, is such an example. He was selected to represent Western Province on several occasions, and at the age of 19, he represented the South African uh, Coloured Football Association thrice in the Federation match. He cited his success to his remarkable fitness. And lastly, non-white clubs received no government funding. White clubs had resources and structures in place that were geared towards Europe. Apartheid made it difficult to play overseas. Mr. Van Diemen indicated in his interview that the thought had occurred to him, but he explained that his family was poor and did not have overseas contacts. The repeal of the apartheid legislation in 1990 stopped unity talks at every level, and soccer was no exception. The four different white, Indian, coloured and Bantu association formed the South African Football Association, or SAFA, which was founded on non-racial and democratic principles. Spencer AFC was established under the most humble circumstances and shined brightly after 105 years of existence. But the club faced many challenges. The biggest challenge is keeping the club going for another 105 years. Spencer advanced through decades of denial and disadvantage through the liberation struggle and now has become a beacon of hope for the less fortunate youths in the community. It has changed its focus from an amateur soccer club to a youth development club, with many former Spenston players ploughing back into the community. The 2010 FIFA World Cup is the greatest event in the game of soccer. The communities are all aware of the opportunities and benefit the World Cup will bring, but at the core, the bid was driven by a pure love of the game. Players getting international exposure by training and playing overseas with top-class facilities and coaches can only be beneficial to South Africans. Local teams can now enjoy the world-class stadiums and South Africa can put in bids for other international matches. This would regulate revenue for the city and could possibly be put to good use for the upliftment of soccer. This sentiment was also echoed in the views by Minister Trevor Manuel, where he expressed his hope for the development of soccer for youths at grassroots level. And should this happen, we can all look forward to a passionate soccer nation and a talented pool of soccer players. And perhaps Spenson can be restored to its former glory. Coming back to my key question, how did Spenson AFC develop over the past 105 years? Since playing soccer in the, in the dust and along racial divisions, Spenson has come a long way, even though they lived apart. Against the odds of poor facilities, isolation, denial and the liberation struggle, soccer continued to thrive. They were at the peak during the 50s and 60s and produced some of the finest soccer players. There was little mention made of women's soccer during the 20th century at William Herbert, and this was due to the fact that women were discriminated against and ridiculed if they played a sport that was predominantly associated with males. The only mention of a ladies' team was in the 1978 fixtures where there was evidence of a Lady Spenston and Lady Yorkshire team. But while women's soccer took full bloom in South Africa, Spenston is unable to field a girls' team. Girls that have membership play alongside the boys. Out of darkness came the hope for the birth of democracy. But by then, Spenston has faced several challenges which affected the stability of the club. Spenston revisited their vision and this created a new surge of energy and confidence in the club and the game. Older players now plough back their energy and time into the game by taking kids from underprivileged communities and giving them soccer. They rose from the darkness and still shine brightly to the point where soccer is recognised as our country's number one national sport. Perhaps these young underprivileged soccer players would get the opportunity of attending 20, a 2010 game be inspired and make Spenson proud again. My self-reflection. This process presented me with an opportunity to learn about history of soccer in the Western Cape and by speaking to the elders in the community about the past created a sense of worth for them, that they had a story to tell and that their story too was important to the youth of the community. During and after the interviewing process, three of the interviewees discussed with me how they would like me to take the project forward and the three suggestions were, firstly, on establishing a club exhibition where the Spenson memorabilia will be displayed. Secondly, 
Mr. Keith Smith planned on establishing an archive at C CDFA at William Herbert. And thirdly, the club chairperson, Mr. Shamil Adams, also planned on compiling an anniversary booklet um, that could honor the interviewees and be a treasure for the club and the community. I am confident that the research that I have completed for the awards would serve as a platform for all of these suggestions that could ultimately commemorate the challenges faced and successes made by Spencer AFC. Thank you.